Hello again to all my friends. It's been quite a while since I've been here, but Mr. Benjamin is here. Like I said, we haven't had a video in a while, but we've been doing other things, and that's been keeping us happy. Big, big, big smile. Okay, the smile's starting to get out of hand. Let's, uh, let's, let's tone it down a bit. There we go. Today we are looking at patterns and rules. More specifically, though, we're looking at algebraic expressions. Now, that word algebra always freaks people out, but it really, really doesn't have to. It's very straightforward. It's just like every other math concept. You follow a series of rules, and you get what you're looking for. Our learning goals for today. We are going to create algebraic expressions. That pink is really harsh. Let's try, let's try white. Using variables and constants. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of the highlighter altogether. I'm just going to underline. So we're going to create algebraic expressions using variables and constants. Now these two terms, variables and constants, we've seen these before. We're going to do a quick recap on those as well. And our second learning goal is to find unknown information using algebra. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's, it's very straightforward, like I said. Just have to follow the rules. So a constant. A constant is something that does not change. Some of the constants we've been seeing in some of our rules, for example, if you had variable or excuse me, various figures that had a whole bunch of diamonds attached to them, and you always saw those three diamonds put together on each figure, you could say that your constant is plus three. That plus 3 doesn't change. It doesn't matter what figure you're looking at. It's always going to be plus 3. Sometimes the constant is bigger. Sometimes it's smaller. It can even be subtract. So you never know. A variable. A variable is a letter or symbol that represents a specific number. It can be any letter, any symbol, anything. It could be X, for example. X is one we all, all the time we will use. Could also be T, could be N, could be F, could be whatever you think. It could be a star. But most of the time we use letters. Let statements. These are something we haven't really looked at before, but we're going to look at them today. So a let statement assigns a variable to a specific value. So if I want to talk about the number of students in my class, for example, I could say let, uh, let's use s, equal the total number of students in Mr. Benjamin's, uh, I'm running out of space for my own name, should have thought ahead, and now I'm using the eraser when I really need the pencil, Benjamin's class. And in many cases, this value will be told to us, or it will be given to us, and all we have to do is change the value. So if we say that s equals 27, it's literally just 27. But if we're told that s is equal to, say, the number of males plus the number of females, I'm going to uh, write that over here. So s could equal number of males plus number of females. I'm sorry if the Dockery sign is in the way. And say we had 13 males and 14 females, then S would just equal 27. You should probably write that up here. S equals number of males plus number of females equals 13 plus 14, which equals, so, sorry, not 17, 27. What a disaster that was. 27. And that is all separated. I apologize for that. So we've been looking at charts with values, and we often find a rule for the numbers we are given. So we usually have figure number on one side, and we have total number of tiles on the other, meaning we've got some shapes, there's some tiles here. Oh, that's not a diamond, that's a diamond. And if this is figure 1, figure 2 would look something different, figure 3 would also be different, etc., etc., etc. 
But in this case, we just have a chart with numbers. Now, we need to find out our rule from this chart. Figure 4, apparently, has 14 tiles. So how can we get from 4 to 14? Well, if we take 4 and we multiply it by, say, 2, for example, we'll get 8. Now, if we add 6 to 8, we get 14. So our rule could be multiplied by 4 and plus 6. Let's try that out for 5 to 17. If we take 5 and multiply it by 4, we get 20. Well, number of tiles on 5 is actually only 17, so that can't be right. So we've got to go back to the drawing board, literally. Let's try multiplying 4 by 3. I think I made a huge mistake previous to this, but that's okay. Bottom line is what I said the rule was the first time, that definitely did not work. 4 multiplied by 3 gives us 12. And to get from 12 to 14, we must add 2. So our rule, oops, I'm a little rusty right now. So our rule could be multiplied by 4, or multiplied by 3, excuse me, plus 2. Let's try that out for 5. 5 multiplied by 3 equals 15. 15 plus 2 equals 17. So that does work for 5. Let's try it out for 8 and see if it works. I'm just going to move the rule up a bit. Uh, in fact, I'm going to erase it and write it out again because that didn't work as well as I'd hoped. Let's write a rule down here. Multiplied by 3 plus 2. So it worked for 4, it worked for 5. Let's try 8. 8 multiplied by 3 equals 24. 24 plus 2 equals 25. Doesn't work, 26, excuse me. Doesn't work for that either, but... In fact, that was supposed to be my rule, and I think I just wrote it in wrong, so I'm going to change that. Please ignore me doing this. Just, just look away for a few seconds. This is actually going to be 26. And look at that! The rule works! Now, if we do it for 10, 10 multiplied by 3 equals 30, and 30 plus 2 equals 32. Alrighty then. Hope I didn't make another mistake there. No, I think it's good now. Anyways... If we wanted to find figure 12, for example, or figure 20, or figure 100, we know all we have to do is take that value and apply it to the rule. So 12 multiplied by 3 plus 2, and that would give us something like 38. If we want to do it with 20, 20 multiplied by 3 plus 2, and that would give us, was it 62? And 100 multiplied by 3 plus 2 equals 102. Oh, 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 no mistakes there. But this seems rather, rather too simplified, if you know what I mean. Now, when our numbers get bigger, it's going to be a lot harder to do that. If our rules were different, if our rule was, say I get rid of all this, if our rule was something like multiplied by 264, uh, subtract 128. It's going to be a lot harder to write that out. So what we do is we give ourselves some let statements to establish an algebraic expression. We're going to say let t equal the total number of tiles. We're also going to say let n or better yet, let's do let f. No, let's do let n. Equal the figure number. So if we take our same rule, remember our rule was multiplied by 3 and plus 2. This entire rule is designed to find the total, the total number of tiles. So we're going to start off with t. T equals, I'm going to write this in gray so it stands out a bit more, equals. What is T based off of? Well, T is based off the figure number, right? What do we have to do to that figure number? We have to multiply that figure number by 3. 
So we're going to say n, because that's the figure number, multiplied by 3 plus 2. Whenever we have a variable multiplied by a number, we can rewrite that in a very, very simple way. We just get rid of the multiplication sign. We write 3n. You can put a dot in between, and that shows multiplied, plus 2. This is our algebraic expression, where t equals the total number of tiles, and n equals the figure number. Okay? So, to find specific figure numbers, hmm, let's see if I can... I'm going to get rid of this for now. We'll come back to it. I'm going to rewrite my rule. Rule was t equals 3n plus 2. And I'm looking for 12, 20, and 100. So I'll write these out as well. Remember, these are figure numbers as well, right? So for figure 12, we want the total number of tiles. So that'll equal 3 multiplied by the figure number, which is 12, plus 2. That's going to be 3 times 12 is 36, plus 2, and that equals 38. I'm going to erase that, and I'm going to go for the next one. So for figure 20, t equals 3n plus 2. And since we know that our figure number is n, we want that there. So that equals 3 multiplied by 20 plus 2. We're basically substituting the figure number for the variable. And that equals 60 plus 2, which equals 62. So figure 20 would have 62 tiles in it. Erase that, and we'll do the last one, which is 100. And it's the same format each time. Write the rule. T equals 3n plus 2. In this case, n is going to be 100. T equals 3 multiplied by 100 plus 2. T equals 300 plus 2, which equals 302. Very, very straightforward. Now, question arises when we don't want to find the total number, we want to find out what the figure number is. So, what if you have the total? So, what if you have the total? and want the figure. So basically in this case we're going to have to work backwards. I'm going to clear that out. Say we have if you have 250 tiles so if you have 250 tiles what figure number can you make? And again, we're going to go back to our rule, which was down here. Sorry, I lost myself for a second. And it's t equals 3n plus 2. That's a weird looking t. I'm going to write that out again. I can do much better. Equals 3n plus 2. Remember, in this case, t equals the total number of tiles. n equals the figure number. So we have t. t is 250. And we want to find n. n equals question mark. So what are we going to do? I'm going to erase all this jazz. And we usually substitute in n to find t. But in this case, we have t. So we're going to write 250 equals 3n plus 2. Now we need to isolate this n. And that means we want it to be by itself. How do we do that? Well, right now we have on this side 3n plus 2 and on this side 250. 
if I want 3n to be by itself, because this is one term, I need to somehow get rid of this 2. Since this is plus 2, the opposite of plus 2 would be minus 2. So I'm going to subtract 2 from this side. If we think back to integers, if you have plus 2 or positive 2 and negative 2 or subtract 2, what happens? They cancel each other out. This would equal 0, right? So that cancels out with that. However, this symbol right here, this sign, this means equals. Whatever you do to this side of the equation, you have to do to this side of the equation, okay? So if I take away 2 from here, I have to take away 2 from here. 2 minus, I'll write it there. Subtract 2. So I'm going to rewrite that whole thing as 250 subtract 2 equals 3n plus 2 subtract 2. And like we said, that cancels out with that. And now we have 250 minus 2, which just equals 248. That equals 3n. So we're looking at 248 equals 3n. Now, like we said, this 3n is actually 3 multiplied by n. And if we're multiplying something, the opposite of that would be to divide it. If we divide it by 3, we're just left with n. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to divide each side by 3. Because whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Let's divide that by 3 and divide that by 3. I apologize if this is getting too small. I'll rewrite it so you can see it. 248 divided by 3. So these 3's will cancel out, and we will literally just be left with n. n will equal something. We're actually left with a decimal answer. It's 82.6, which will round up to 82.7, but it won't make a difference because we can't make 7 tenths of a figure. So our answer is going to be figure 82 can be made. So your try this assignment, your take home. Using the same algebraic expression of t equals 3n plus 2, how many tiles are in figure 350? And what figure has 1,097 tiles? Give that a go. I apologize for the length of the video, but as always, we say thank you. And hope you have a nice day.